Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in today's video we're going to be going back to Trappist 1 system and talking about a new discovery that kind of takes us a little bit closer to understanding this star system a little bit better. Anyway, welcome to What The Math. <laughs> So the TRAPPIST-1 system is actually a relatively recent discovery, but even uh, today scientists are really really busy trying to find out as much about the system as we can for two reasons. One is that it's actually kind of close to us, it's only about 40 light years away, and that's really really close when it comes to stars. And second of all, the reason that we're most excited about it is that it actually has seven uh, what seems to be terrestrial planets. Now, we don't really know if they're habitable or not, but we got a little bit closer to understanding what's happening here. Specifically, we actually did the following. There were two separate studies and two separate analyses, which um, basically did two things. One of them actually looked at the passage of planets in front of the star and looked at the minute uh, changes in the spectrum of the starlight right around the edge of the planet or specifically each of the planets um, and this was meant to try to study if these planets had atmosphere on them now because it's actually a relatively difficult task and requires really powerful telescopes the first attempt wasn't really successful at finding uh, the actual atmosphere but it did discover that there is no hydrogen around most of these planets this suggests that these are obviously not um, gas giants or gas dwarfs in this sense, but also that these are not new planets that would have hydrogen. So there might be some other stuff here, but definitely not hydrogen. And if there is an atmosphere around these planets, we know that uh, it would probably be made up of carbon dioxide, oxygen, and potentially methane. And so we are now going to be looking at those particular spectra to try to see if there is anything else um, around them. Now, this is not particularly an exciting finding, but, but you know, sometimes not finding something or finding that something is not there is just as important as finding something that is there. And then the second study actually did something a little bit more complex. It was based uh, on observation of orbital perturbations of these planets as they orbit around the star, but also as they pass by close to each other. So these are not perfect circles and these are not even perfectly fixed elliptical um, orbits. Each of these planets influences each other as they orbit around TRAPPIST-1. Now we don't really see it with our, um, with our own eyes, because it's just, it's very, very minute, it's very tiny. But a computer can totally see it. As a matter of fact, what the scientists did is, they created a simulation, uh, which they run basically thousands and thousands of times to try to find out what was the most accurate representation of the orbital path here, uh, compared to what we see. In other words, they basically ran a simulation and then they looked at the results of what we really see and tried to estimate which of these simulations was most accurate. And turns out, using the simulations, they were able to discover uh, really, really important factors about TRAPPIST-1 planets. They discovered their mass, and uh, to some extent, we already knew their size, so they basically discovered both mass and size, and thus, density. Now, currently, in, in this particular simulation, this is a bit outdated, so the density here is not actually that accurate. As a matter of fact, the size is not accurate either. I'm gonna show you the most accurate representation we have um, as of today, and here it is. And this right here is based on uh, the analysis by NASA, and basically it kind of gives you an idea of how these seven planets compare to our own planets. Now, just to summarize, uh, so the density is right here, the surface gravity is right here, and the mass and radius is right here. What is interesting here is that none of these uh, planets seem to have higher surface gravity than Earth. As a matter of fact, Earth so far is the winner in terms of gravity. But this object right here, TRAPPIST-1e, seems to have higher density. And that's uh, despite the fact that it has lower mass and lower, lower radius, which would suggest that maybe it has some sort of a highly metallic core on the inside, which would also potentially suggest if it actually is spinning a little bit faster than uh, Venus, and as long as it actually has a spin of at least six days, 
uh, which is its orbital period, and we assume that it is actually uh, most likely uh, tidally locked to its star. There is a high possibility that this planet right here might have relatively powerful magnetic field, which is really important for maintaining liquid water and, of course, a magnetosphere. Now, other planets are not as exciting, as a matter of fact, uh, here the density is uh, even lower than Venus, and this particular object that we were super, super excited about um, might actually be the least exciting of them, because the density here is much, much lower than any other planet in TRAPPIST-1, and is actually even lower than the density of Mars, which is already not a very dense planet to begin with. Also, the gravity here is about half the gravity of Earth, and um, the other three objects, we're not really sure what's going on there yet, but we think that um, there might be actually some sort of a, a large uh, terrestrial core and probably a lot of ice on the surface. Now, let's actually just kind of summarize what we know about each of these. And let's start with the ones on the uh, outskirts of the star system first. So TRAPPIST-1h, TRAPPIST-1g, and most likely TRAPPIST-1f are probably either frozen worlds or, if they have thicker atmosphere, they might be... Let's actually simulate this right here. Very interesting water worlds, potentially with some uh, continents, but very likely just big water worlds with nothing on them, with most of the density being lower due to the fact that there's just so much water on the surface of these planets. All three of them seem to have relatively low density, which suggests um, very likely non-terrestrial materials such as ices. TRAPPIST-1e seems to be the most exciting discovery we have so far because it does seem to have very, very high density. It does potentially really, really uh, metallic core and potentially also magnetic field. And if there's magnetic field, maybe, just maybe, this is actually a very interesting habitable planet with quite a lot of um, liquid water and maybe even some kind of a really interesting atmosphere. So here, even with just a little bit of atmospheric pressure, you basically get temperatures that are comparable to Earth, and which is something that actually might give us a lot of um, hope for this to be a, an actual future home for humanity. So as you can see here, it's going to stabilize around about 20 degrees Celsius. So that is uh, probably the most exciting discovery. But then there is some discoveries that were not as exciting. This is specifically TRAPPIST-1d, which seems to not be as terrestrial as we hoped. So this might actually be more or less um, icy body or some sort of a body that's just covered with a lot of uh, atmosphere where it's probably not very dense due to a very large ice uh, cover or some kind of a water layer, which makes it a lot less dense than other objects in the star system. So that's TRAPPIST-1d. Unfortunately, so far, a disappointment. And then we have the first two objects, 1b and 1c, both of which appear to be terrestrial and relatively high in density. And TRAPPIST-1c, as a matter of fact, seems to be the second most dense um, planet in this, in this particular star system, with very uh, Earth-like gravity and potentially some uh, at atmosphere and potentially some water. But because it's so much closer to the parent star than other planets, it's probably also very, very hot here. So this might be actually a world similar to Venus, which we can try to recreate here by adding just a little bit of atmosphere and uh, maybe some water, but then it will probably very likely evaporate really, really quickly. So uh, this is essentially what we've discovered so far as of February 2018. And I'm sure as the time goes by and as we do more and more of these studies, we'll probably discover more and more interesting details about TRAPPIST-1 system. Now, if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to share this video with someone who enjoys watching space videos and come back tomorrow to learn something else. And here we can actually see how TRAPPIST-1c is going to start losing most of its water as it gets hotter and hotter and hotter because even a little bit of atmosphere here would probably create a greenhouse effect that would be extremely high. Now, for all we know, uh, maybe just maybe these planets are actually habitable and do have a lot of water, but for now all of this is a bit of a guesswork based on what we discover using various telescopes. What is certain though, or at least more or less certain, are the sizes and radii of these planets, although with time maybe we'll change these results just a little bit. For now, that's all I wanted to talk about. See you guys tomorrow. Space out, and as always, bye bye.